So, after my last video, where I showed you how I am uh, uh, grinding the bevels on the SFKs, uh, the, my Bushcraft knives, uh, I got some people interested on the jig that I am using. And that's a very simple, very elegant and very good solution. I haven't seen it really on uh, YouTube and nobody has talked about it and it's such a nice solution. I'm like, it's most well kept secret that is not a secret. <laughs> so uh, the construction is very easy, but before we go into that, there is a very important note for all of the makers. If you want to use this uh, jig, you need to have a uh, grinder that's platen, uh, platen angle is adjustable. Uh, if you have a fixed uh, platen that is only 90 degrees to the uh, work rest, this jig won't work as the jig itself is not adju adjustable. So uh, I have grinders that have very nicely adjustable uh, platens where you can very easily and incrementally increase the angle so it's very easy to set up. And for the setup, I actually use a digital uh, calc a digital angle uh, measuring brick, I don't know, whatever, uh, which tells me what is the actual angle. And before you put it on the platen, always remember you need to zero it on your work rest. So it's 90, it's zero here and uh, you are actually measuring the actual angle. Uh, of the platen relating to the work rest and if it is not zeroed it is measuring from the ground and if you have if your uh, grinder is tilted you will get some bad readings so that out of the way the jig itself it's super simple it's just two one to three blocks that are together jointed via two screws and that's it that's that's about it because you want to hold your knife 90 degrees to the work rest and the angle is set on the platen and it's done. And the most beautiful thing about that is that blade is available from both sides. So you did, when you are using an angle iron, uh, the blade is clamped and only one side is available. And with this uh, jig, it's very easy to grind one side, change change it around, just flip it, and you can grind the other side. And you, in between you can dip it, and it's not very heavy, and it's very easy to access the blade. Uh, it's also very nice that the one to three blocks have a lot of holes, so it is very easily adjustable on, uh, let's say you want, like I do on my SFKs, you want uh, the plunge line to be angled a little bit, so it's very easy just to put in one screw like I showed you in my past video uh, where you can create this sort of jig on your jig uh, where every blade is at the same angle in all of your 1-3 to three blocks. 1-3 to three blocks are readily available, you can buy them everywhere. They are not that expensive and they are very very useful in the workshop. So if you are not using them as jigs you can use them on your drill press or to align something, to offset something, stack and play them or you can just put in pencils or whatever. <laughs> so it's, it's very useful and it's a very nice tool. Uh, another thing to note in this jig, it's not, you should not only put your blade in, but you need to have a spacer that is just a tiny bit, I am talking about a fraction of a millimeter, so like something like five or ten thou, I guess in freedom units, whatever, uh, that is of the same stock. Uh, so you, if you put your blade from the top, you need to put in that spacer from the bottom, so the when you are screwing and clamping it together, the one to three blocks go together nicely and they are not crooked. If you don't put it in, uh, the spacer, the the one to three blocks uh, will go crooked uh, and they will uh, go downwards. They they will clamp not perpendicularly, I guess, and the whole jig would not uh, stand 
upright on the board crest and it would actually uh, rock from side to side which is very bad because we want to hold a perfect angle and if you put a spacer that is a smidge too big the reverse happens and they are actually coming closer together at the top and you also get the rocking motion which is even more severe than in the pre previous case and the angle from side to side actually changes so you need to keep that in mind and every time you set it up as you can see in my previous video i'm banging it on the table and putting my fingers on top and actually moving from side to side and to see just if there is a little bit of rock if if there is some rocking motion i need to reset it but that is very quickly done that's very easily done and you can play with those spacers that is that is pretty simple if you you can use basically the same stock as your knife is made from just grind it a smidge like five tau uh, smaller uh, thinner and you will be golden one modification that i did to my one to three blocks is actually that i glued some uh, kydex to the sides of them that are on the inside of the jig and i did that because uh, sometimes I sandblast my uh, uh, blades just before uh, uh, grinding the bevels to get this contrasting uh, look where the bevel is shiny, the whole uh, blade profile is matte. Mm, and there were some problems as when there is some steel on steel action, uh, you get some rubbing uh, on the blades and it doesn't look that nice and you need to redo the sandblast and cover the blade so you don't sandblast what you don't want to sandblast so I just glued on with some uh, quick setting glue kydex basically kydex it needs to be the same thickness I drilled through the holes to make again them adjustable and it works perfectly the kydex is pretty soft but it gives you a very nice clamping on the blades and it holds them very very firmly and uh, you don't get any more uh, uh, scratch marks there is no surface damage so yeah this is I think I think this is the simplest and the best jig out there it has some drawbacks especially if you want to do thin and large blades uh, because if you want if like we are talking about chef's knives and the knife itself is not supported and you are, it's like 20 centimeters long uh, when you are grinding near the tip the blade itself bends and it bends towards where you are pushing and that it's towards uh, the belt and you tend to over grind places as if you would do it with the angle iron stuff uh, it is always backed equally and if you are grinding it it has support on all of the sides so uh, this is very good for shorter shorter blades that are not so thin and it's very easy to set up and i think this is the perfect jig for beginners uh, apprentices even i guess maybe masters if you <laughs> find it worth to use them and i think it's even faster than grinding with uh, freehand grinding and it's very easy to teach and it's very very efficient at least i find that if you because you can use multiple grinders where you set up them at the exact same angle the platens and you can have a grid progression on all over them and you just go from one to the next to the next and you don't need to reset your jigs and it doesn't take that long basically the longest time that it takes is the first setup of all the grinders so you get the precise beautiful angle that you actually want and just to calculate the angle it's very easy you can use any Pythagorean theorem calculator online or you can do it in your mind or whatever uh, basically what you need to know is you need to think about how thick of an edge you want your knife to have when you finish it uh, then you measure how thick is your stock then from the stock you subtract 
the amount of the edge thickness remaining uh, and then the number that remains you divide divided by two and then you need to calculate or just to measure uh, how with, like with, with a ruler or whatever how high the bevel you want it to go on your knife so let's say 20 millimeters so and you have like these two edges of a triangle whereas one is the remaining half of a thickness of the stock the other is the blade uh, the grind height and just you just put them in and you get the angle that the platen needs to be in relation with the pork crest and that is pretty simple then you just adjust your uh, platen and you are good to go so i think this is a foolproof very easy uh, to set up jig of course you need a specific grinder and the biggest problems comes when you set up your uh, one to three blocks where they are not perpendicular to each other and they are crooked and you have a little bit of rock then the bevels from side to side are different and it gives you such a headache but if you can solve that which is very easy you get beautiful bevels every time so I don't know why nobody has shared this or if they have please let me know uh, that is very exciting and I hope this help you out and it doesn't matter if you are a maker or not uh, just a little bit insight on how to make things more efficient so this was another talking head video and I hope you enjoyed it so thanks everybody for coming and I guess I see you... Oh, also, no, not, not see you. Uh, like, share, subscribe, comment, whatever. Uh, I don't know, maybe it's Instagram, so reshare stuff. Or if it's YouTube, uh, do the things that I said. Favorite, uh, give, show it to a friend or maybe don't show it to your enemy. Yeah, do all of that stuff. And I hope you enjoy my stuff and enjoy the knives that I'm making. And I can't wait to finish them up. See you, I guess. Bye!